This episode looks into the ways that publications may accompany and complement the spatial aspect of exhibitions and act as a means of documentation for exhibitions that are finite. We will introduce the different formats that exhibition publications can exist in and question whether the future of printed documentation or post-exhibition publications are in the digital age and why they might still be necessary or desirable. The episode includes a conversation with artist and designer Vanessa Ban and artist Kairula Rahim on how publications are integral to exhibitions and how they represent, extend, or continue from the exhibition. The key learning points of this episode are What are the different format possibilities for publications that accompany exhibitions? How do we best represent an exhibition or event through a publication? As an artist or arts practitioner, you may often wonder if you should have a publication accompany an exhibition or event. This question may occur at any point of the process of planning for an exhibition in a gallery. Publications produced on the occasion of events or exhibitions are commonly referred to as catalogues. Most of the time, exhibition publications and catalogues serve as companions that help to represent and capture the exhibition in a portable format. The exhibition catalog also extends the concerns and subject matter of the exhibition beyond its physical duration and offers space to elaborate on various theoretical concerns. As the publication serves as an avenue of documentation and or expansion, it is important to ensure that it reflects the intentions and essence of the exhibition, unless it is conceived as a deliberate tangent. One of the main reasons that the exhibition catalogues are popular is the finite nature of exhibitions. Exhibitions are temporary. Once ended, they may only be accessible through publications or through images circulated online. For artists, the catalog serves as a way to disseminate and share the exhibition with friends, collaborators, or interested parties who are keen to know more about their practice or who may not have had the chance to personally view the exhibition. Through the publication, you might be able to elaborate on the starting points for the exhibition or the artworks, to share unique insights into the creation process, and even engage in dialogue with like-minded practitioners to better contextualize your practice within a wider field of interest. The publication provides a space to slowly understand the thought and work that went into the exhibition by giving a more thorough understanding that goes beyond the wall text in the space. Exhibition catalogues help to create a lasting impression of the exhibition even after they are over. There are two distinct approaches that are usually taken. Firstly, art book as representation. The first approach is more concerned with representing and documenting the exhibition. Such publications tend to have a smaller page count with a focus on photographs of the exhibition and the featured artworks. There may be one or two writings, such as interviews or essays, that are featured alongside the visuals, but these contributions are not usually very dense or lengthy. The additional texts supplement the exhibition and give more insights into the thought and creative processes to contextualize the exhibition and the artist's practice. Secondly, art book as extension. The second approach sees the publication as a way to extend the exhibition's engagement with its specific concerns and subject matter. This also includes a variety of artwork images, but the accompanying texts tend to be more in-depth and discursive. 
It usually features a variety of contributions from writers and curators that flush out the exhibition's themes. An endeavor of this scale may also require more research funding and even institutional support. It is also possible to have both approaches intermingle, but the scale is what sets them apart. In both approaches, we note that the publication is seen as a companion to the exhibition that helps to extend its lifespan and reach beyond the physical space and duration. While it is not impossible to create an exhibition catalog without expertise in design or writing, getting collaborators who you trust to deliver in those aspects will help in sharing the responsibility and moving you closer towards realizing your dream publication. The various considerations that make up an exhibition catalog may have to be handled on top of producing artworks for the exhibition or preparing for an artist talk. It is thus important to decide which designers or writers you would be comfortable and keen to work with, and consider whose approach, interests, or ways of working resonates most with you. Of course, ultimately, the capacity to involve more people in your dream team may also be determined by the budget of the publication project and the feasibility of paying everyone on board. This does not mean that exhibition catalogs require a large team to realize, but it is important to be realistic about what scale of publication is feasible for you. There are various decision makers and stakeholders in a publication project. Some of them include curators and institution directors that would have a large hand in shaping and driving the project alongside you. Art curators are involved with selecting and interpreting works of art. Curators are usually responsible for written content within the catalog, such as essays and interviews. Other stakeholders may also include gallery and museum directors, who may also have a say in the project. Most of the time, these stakeholders are mainly concerned with how the book represents their space or institution. It would be important to think of the following while working with these stakeholders. Are there values that you feel are central to the project that everyone involved should be aware of? What are institutional or organizational values that need to be reflected in the publication? What aspect of the publication are these stakeholders concerned about? Do their concerns in some way conflict with your own intentions behind the artwork or your preferred method of representing the work? If the written content in the exhibition catalog is not undertaken by the curator, or if the exhibition does not have a curator, a writer may be commissioned to work on it. Their writing could help to explain, contextualize, or extend the exhibition. Editorial designers are engaged to think about typography and the content layout of the catalog. The design of the catalog is its interface with the audience or reader. It should be an appropriate vessel to present the contents of the publication to the viewer. Here are a few starting questions that may help you reflect on the content and design. Is there a tone, mood, or style that is consistent with these values? Are there any that should be avoided? Are there any stylistic and aesthetic references that can inform the project? So, a recurring question is, to print or not to print? Exhibition catalogs can come in both physical and digital formats. With something that is digitally circulated as a PDF or microsite, you might want to think about the following. It's usually off a lower production cost. It's accessible, easily circulated, and you'll need to think about platforms for hosting and viewing the PDF. With a printed catalog, these are a few things to consider. Its production cost is usually higher. It will be in limited quantity. You'll have more expressive possibilities in terms of playing with the tactile material of the publication, like binding, sequencing, and paper. It'll also be possible to circulate it 
in a digital format. Deciding between both formats may be a question of the resources you have available and the costs of the project. In terms of planning for the content in an exhibition catalog, these are the usual components. Cover, writing, photography and documentation, colophon or acknowledgements, and floor plan along with list of works. These components should always be in dialogue with the design and form of the book. As an artist, all of these parts are crucial to the framing and presentation of your work. We can also break down some of the components further to six key considerations. Number one, writing to frame the exhibition. The writing in an exhibition catalog can take the form of forward, introduction, artist statement, exhibition synopsis, curatorial essay, exhibition essay, research essay, creative writing, such as poetry and fiction, and interview with the artist. Across these forms of writing, the role of the text here is to provide insights into the artist's practice and the exhibition. It seeks to elaborate, share, and highlight aspects of the exhibition that are significant or not immediately apparent. It would also be necessary to seek collaborators that you feel would be able to help articulate, reflect, and expand on your practice. Number two, planning the editorial flow. The extensiveness of the content in your catalog would also determine the flow of the book and how it is designed and laid out. The flow determines the pacing of the book and how images and text are laid out on a page in relation to one another. It also refers to the pagination of the book, which is the process of dividing a document into separate pages. To plan the editorial flow, you would need to consider what kind of texts are in the catalog? What is the proximity of the text and images? Does the flow of the artwork images correspond to how a viewer may encounter it in the space? Most exhibition catalogs also end with credits or acknowledgements. You may want to check if there is a crediting standard that you or the exhibition venue you are showing at follows. Number three, common cover design approaches. Firstly, focused on artwork image. For a solo exhibition, it is possible to choose a single artwork image or a photograph of the exhibition as the cover image. With group exhibitions, the decision to feature one artwork image may not be the best approach or most representative of the different artists' works in the exhibition. Secondly, key visual. A key visual refers to the anchor visual of the exhibition. Typically, a key visual stylistically captures the title of the exhibition as well as any other crucial information through design. Occasionally, it includes certain patterns or other graphic elements. It may also incorporate an artwork image. Number four, images and the editorial. The relationship between images and text would inform their placement, sequence, and scale. Scale. It is important to think about the scale of the artworks across the entire exhibition and ensure that the images reproduced in the publication correspond to their actual sizes. For instance, an image of a large site-specific work might take up more space on the page than a smaller artwork. Pagination. You can consider how much space images and captions take in the catalog. If details in the artwork images are significant, you can consider spreading the images out across two pages so that a wall of text does not immediately precede or follow after the image. This helps to ensure ample space to look closely at the images. The caption of all the artworks should ideally be standardized across the publication. A common format would include details such as artist name, if there are different artists for a group exhibition. 
artwork title in italics. Year, medium line, dimensions in centimeters, in the order of height by width by depth, and collection line. Number five, photography of art in the exhibition. As the artwork images play a crucial role in capturing the experience of viewing the artworks and the exhibition, documenting your work properly is incredibly important. Different mediums may require different types of documentation. For filmic or performance work, we can consider whether a documentation or installation view is preferable to a still or posed image. For sculptors, you may want to decide if the front, back, or other side of the work could also be documented and included in the catalogue. How much exhibition space features in the image of the artwork also depends on how site-specific the artwork is. Sometimes, detailed shots are necessary to draw viewers to notice specific elements of the work. If lighting is something that you have control over, take some time to decide if the work is better represented in cool or warm lighting. Some colors or details of the medium may become flatter or lost in warm lighting. We also wouldn't want to overwhelm the exhibition catalog with too many images in an attempt to simulate the experience of viewing it physically. The artwork images are a representation of your work that will ultimately differ from the actual work. Number six, timeline. Last but not least, the timeline of your publication would also inform the type of writing or images that may be realistically possible for the publication. Most publications are ideally circulated on the opening of the exhibition, but they may also be timed midway during the run of the exhibition, launched in conjunction with an artist talk or event. Photographs of the exhibition or artworks may not always come in time for a publication due to launch on the opening, especially if your first priority is in making sure your artworks are completed on time. Having more time to properly enjoy working on the publication is always a benefit. You may want to consider timing it so that the work is not stressful for your collaborators and yourself. We will now be moving on to the conversation segment of this episode with artist Kairula Rahim and artist and designer Vanessa Bunn on their publication projects and how they approach publications for exhibitions. Welcome to Art Books, a beginner's guide. Uh, for this episode, we are focusing on publications as a complementary or companion form to uh, exhibitions. I'm with um, artist uh, Kairula Rahim and artist designer Vanessa Ban today, and we'll be discussing a few of their publication projects um, that they've worked on together and separately. So um, without further ado, um, can we perhaps start first by taking the time to introduce a little bit about the projects that you've worked on and the publications that you've worked on. Um, Vanessa, maybe you can start first with uh, Click Candy. Sure. Um, so Click Candy is basically an exhibition catalogue for my solo exhibition for, of the same name. Um, and the solo exhi exhibition was in 2016 at Great Projects. Um, and it the show is basically about the erasure of sexualized clickbait. And the catalogue, which I designed as well, has um, two essays and one interview. Um, and, you know, it, it's been it's a it's a catalog that basically for this I try to feature a lot more of the text rather than the images uh, and kind of scatter that around in terms of the way that clickbait images work as well. Yeah. Um, perhaps Kai, then you can share a little bit more about the publication projects that we will be discussing later on. Um, I have two exhibition catalogs with me here. Um, the first one that I will be mentioning is um, if you think I winked, I did. So this was from my first solo exhibition in 2015, uh, which took place at Force Gallery. Um, it was my um, you can say my, my, my debut solo exhibition with, with like a commercial gallery. Um, and I actually worked with um, uh, Vanessa Ban to uh, design this um, catalog. So um, the exhibition is centered around um, 
the intimate notions of um, uh, public and communal swimming pools and how they are being utilized um, by specific communities. The exhibition catalog also um, includes an interview um, with, um, between myself and Adeline Kui. Yeah. The second publication that I will also be mentioning is uh, Next Sunday, which was my second um, solo exhibition, um, which took place at Shop House 5 um, under Chanham Galleries in 2016. Um, the exhibition um, is centered around, um, again, about spaces and how they are being um, occupied by uh, communities. In this case, I was actually looking at uh, migrant workers and domestic helpers um, when they occupy spaces like um, Chinese Garden um, every Sunday. Um, the exhibition features um, also um, I think it was probably one of the earlier shows that actually featured um, object-based work. So I, I was starting to also explore sculptures and photography in, in this um, exhibition. Um, the catalog includes um, a writing by Samantha Yap, yourself. Um, uh, again, designed by Vanessa Ban, but also um, for the second one, I actually uh, incorporated um, two other contributions. Um, one, which was a poem by Cyril Wong and um, a piece of uh, prose by Eugenia Tan. Yeah. And I wanted to start off by saying, um, or asking, how do you, how do you both usually start off working together? Initially, like, I had no thought about like getting like a, like a, like a designer to to do a catalog for me but i think it was only like a few months actually before before the exhibition when i was actually um, suggested or, or rather recommended um, uh, by this artist friend that i should consider having a publication and how it, it could serve itself as a very useful thing in the future in terms of like cataloging like a like an exhibition like this um, so I was uh, introduced to Vanessa uh, Vanessa Ban for for, for this um, so even before 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 I, I, I met her I, I've already understood that um, her practice doesn't uh, limit only to um, graphic design I was already going to work with someone who who, who would be able to understand some of my expectations um, in regards to what I want with a, um, an exhibition catalog um, so that's how I think we, we sort of like started working together but again um, as we delve deeper into like this whole process of like materializing the the exhibition catalog um, one thing that really struck out for me about Vanessa um, and my experience with her was that um, I really appreciated the fact that um, she understood like where I'm coming from because especially in this show where I was actually speaking about communities that are already so vulnerable um, there was this also um, um, concern about safety and opacity um, in terms of like talking about about the work working with someone who, who has that experience um, she actually gave me a lot of very, very valuable input. So even things like um, thinking about um, how can we incorporate some of those um, qualities um, from the works and from the show and how can we incorporate, um, include that um, somehow into the design of the catalogue. So I, I, I really learned a lot of that um, from, from her because it, although it may seem like it's just like a like a catalogue of like images, but actually um, a lot of things have been considered specifically um, in relation to the show, like the colours, um, material-wise, I think all those things, I, I, I really appreciated that. So on the note on collaboration, I want to take this question a little bit further by maybe getting um, Vanessa to share a little bit more about like the approach that you take towards um, designing publications. For me as a designer, how can I create something that supports the show and you know in a sense when there's so many layers to an artwork I also want the design to present more layers to to the work um, so when you see an artwork there's a lot of layers when you read the curator writing there's more layers to be unraveled in the work and so with design certain choices or sensibilities or colors there's more to be kind of seen and how that's communicated so for me that collaborative process is actually really important one memory I had was that we went to Jalan Besar to look mm. for those materials together yeah. we went to see that like those aunties to look for the, 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 the sort of the cover just to get a sense, yeah, yeah the, the mm -hmm. tablin, just to get a sense of what we could push for the catalog materially. Um, and, you know, 
that was that was an interesting process uh, yeah. because you you don't often um, go together to see these things and try to see what can be done um, to try and negotiate on print um, to work with budgets but <clears throat> you know when when that happened I thought that was a pretty nice process usually in most cases in design the, the, you know it's quite removed so Kai was very involved in the process um, and as for the catalog you know there's some decisions that were made that I wanted to sort of reflect you know sort of the mood and the sensitivities of the show mm -hmm. um, but to kind of again present certain layers in the world My takeaway from this is that you know I think what Kai mentioned about you know you and your hand in a project is that he trusts that I think you are able to sort of bring your your creative vision and like your sensibility to his work and I think for you you also see it as a as a more supportive role like it's not really a competition of the like aesthetics but more of like how do these two like different kind of aesthetics or qualities come together and complement each other how do these two working processes complement and work each other and I think that that's really a kind of enduring process of getting to know someone better and also knowing their work better and obviously that you know having worked together on the first catalogue you guys went on to work on other catalogues as well and other projects as well Kai, so why did you um, decide to create uh, catalogues for both of your exhibitions? Um, I think what I learned from, from the first exhibition um, was that the catalogue actually contribute um, way more than, than, than just like a publication um, copy right um, like what Vanessa just 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 mentioned previously also like how this this publication also have a kind of like significance um, in relation to the to, to the exhibition it becomes part of the show it becomes almost like an artwork in the show like um, also like when when even making of the catalog there's also this process of like um, sourcing out for materials. So I, I realized the, the, the significance of a publication actually goes way beyond than just what we understand as a traditional um, catalog. So when I was doing, um, uh, preparing for my second show, um, it was a very natural thing to think about. But also I, I sort of like took that opportunity to kind of like really push um, some of the, those things that I, I realized um, in hindsight. Uh, thinking about like what could have been done better uh, in thinking about the catalog itself like like its content right um, so for the second exhibition next Sunday um, I actually wanted to include not just my works but also works of um, other people so this is in a form of like essays or even like prose writing um, and I think there was yes there was actually a, a poem contributed by um, Cyril um, a few months or even like a few a few months probably before the show, I remember I, I attended this um, exhibition uh, where uh, during its um, its artist talk, they invited Cyril to actually uh, perform. When I experienced him in 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 the space performing, I remember I was like completely enamored by 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 Cyril Wong. For like wow, like this person, I I I really want, like I really enjoyed that. Like I mean he. He's a, a, a writer, a, a poet, right? Um, and I thought like it will be such a nice thing to include in the exhibition to actually have like his poem inside. Also because in that exhibition, I was actually looking into the, the poet, um, poetics of space. There's also so many layers of like uh, poetic qualities in how um, communities um, utilize those um, uh, public spaces. I remember speaking about how it's, I mean, it's very easy to assume like the show actually um, highlights like the migrant workers, the Indian national workers who actually gather every Sunday to play cricket. But actually there are also a lot of other communities, right? We have like the teenagers, we have like local residents, we have uh, domestic helpers. So again, there's this idea about richness and I don't think um, me using only one person's writing or contribution is enough to sort of like hint or, or try to emulate this kind of like richness into the the catalog but of course there are limitations um even though this time around i remember i uh, we have a bit more time to to work with but um there are also other concerns you know budget constraint is usually one of the biggest factor that will will really affect how um you you think in terms of like materializing a, a catalog um but um yeah that that was like like really a, a a good opportunity for me to almost like you know like fulfill what I really wanted to do for for the first catalog so um, with that catalog I think um, 
like design wise it was also interesting because like when i uh, um, approach um vanessa um the format i wouldn't say it's it's similar at all it's almost like let's let's start afresh you know um she was again asking me about some of those um, motives and sensibilities in in the exhibitions um but this is the thing like when when i work with with vanessa like i think you mentioned about her sensitivity um not just as a, as a designer but also as an artist um i can be really upfront here and say that maybe 90% of the the ideas actually came from her i i wanted to be more kind of like a artist to artist collaboration not 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 so much like i want this i want that like do this for me i think that what stood out to me the most and what you shared about um you know why you've worked on exhibition catalogs and your experience working with them and working with Vanessa is this sense of collaboration and obviously that's the theme of the conversation but i think that with exhibition making it's always like you know it's always a a process that involves so many different people but i think that with the publication that becomes even more apparent in a sense that you know you are really bringing together a few different people's voices and so bringing together a few different people's creative work so there is in some sense i think even if you were mentioning that you know this was something that became even more prominent because the, you know the team of the exhibition with next sunday was to think about how com- uh, parks and community spaces are, are populated by different people and that kind of diversity also should be reflected that in some ways in terms of the contributors that you have in the publication i think that even you know when we think about publications it's always a chance to reach out to other people to work with more people and i think that with this i want to turn the question over to Vanessa especially for your solo exhibition Click Candy so with Kai i think he mentioned a lot about how you know as an artist he was also working with someone who was an artist and a designer so it was that kind of collaboration was more apparent but i think that um with Click Candy your solo um exhibition you were the artist so you were making work and you're conceptualizing the exhibition but you also you also designed and produced the catalog in yourself so i think that you know the 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 kind of roles that you absorbed in you know producing Click Candy as a show i'm quite curious about that so um Click Candy was my first solo show and so <clears throat> i think maybe the major challenge was actually working with the space um but you know eventually kind of once that got kind of got settled um i definitely didn't want to think about a post show catalog um but i think only because it was i felt there was an opportunity to you know at least sort of preserve and archive the work in that sense i think one of the main things about the publication is that firstly it's um actually a lot more text focus um rather than sort of the traditional catalog where there's a, the artwork um there is no captions to the artwork um but really a, a, a big focus is on the text so actually if you look in the book the, the text is actually unusually quite large and it's really to kind of reverse that f- focus um the images start to become really small also almost like little pop up ads right which is what they are so conceptually i thought that worked quite well um and there was um you know two writings in there um and an interview um and uh, the two writings themselves are also quite different one is a lot more kind of about the work and about sort of more sort of academic essay style and one is a lot more sort of narrative style also so i quite like that there were different views coming in to kind of like again present some of those layers into the work um and for the publication itself um i one i think one thing also about about it was the use of the materials um the the book itself is actually made from paper that's made from stone uh, rather than from trees so what happens is that um it kind of disintegrates first leaf you burn it it doesn't turn to ash but it just sort of disappears into a powder um you can't tear it um it it's also like waterproof um and it's just a very very soft material it just sort of lies there very very soft um and it's not really like paper so i quite like those subtleties in terms of like um putting that in the publication that already firstly prioritizes the text or and it has little images going all over the place doesn't have your captions doesn't have the images of the space and also the material where um something about it just sort of falls on it very very soft but to me i think with the catalog is really where even if i read back on it i really do feel like it really provides so much to show them and you know i think the importance of a catalog and the writings again it really talks of, and it really gives you gives you so much layers to a show that you may have missed in in the beginning what keeps coming up is also the physicality and the tactility of like mm. the publication like you both were mentioning about how for um the first solo that Kai did you know there was also a sourcing for the kind of material the tapuling kind of material for the cover and then with um Click Candy there was like the the rock 
paper. And I think that that kind of, you know, sensitivity to material is also another chance for you to think about how can the exhibition's premise, you know, beyond the physical experience of looking at the work still endure in other ways, you know, in that book format. With this, I think it like, you know, ties us nicely into my next question, which is also about like, you know, how you both have been working together. So I think to start off, um, actually what has you know, what do you feel has been the most challenging part of, of, you know, in your collaborations together? Like what has been the most challenging aspects? There's a few, there's a few different challenges. Um, but I think if we, maybe one of the first ones is obviously whether there, there's a sort of collaborative um, effort, whether there is a sort of creative, like I think it has to flow. Um, because if that doesn't really flow, then you can't really move on to all the other parts, right? So you have to kind of look at it like something that's quite creative and then something that's quite pragmatic. So obviously, uh, pragmatism, as Kai mentioned, would always be budgets. I mean, they're quite real, but they're also not... Like, I don't think we need to see them as like a big stumbling block, but we just need to try and find alternative solutions around it. Um, and in a sense, be flexible to see what we can do or make to still try to get the best outcome possible. So for me, um, I think when meeting um, anyone like the artist or any client, you know, I think that there has to be, in a sense, intuitively, like we know that we will work well together. There is no sort of tension or kind of like, um, don't know whether we'll trust each other because I think if there's no trust and it's quite hard for it to kind of move on to any other stage of negotiation. Um, and of course, uh, budgets, um, budgets can of course really make a big difference, but I don't think that it's the be all end all of, of it. Um, Kai's and my publications have also been under quite difficult um, budget constraints, but there are still ways to work around it. And I think that both of us need that kind of flexibility um, to understand that certain things um, may not come out the way that we envision, but it's as long as we kind of have that process together, I think that we can move it to something that both of us would be happy with, that most importantly, I think, kind of encapsulates the, the show and the work, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, like, the like, while we speak of materiality, it's also not everything. I think that there is a lot more in in working together, in the process, and collaborating, um, in, or even in just you know seeing the, the works in print, even in, in looking at that stuff, that I think is a lot more valuable than holding on to something that is you know that is more transient. Right? Over time, you know, the catalogs will you know in a sense outlast the show. So I think that the memory of obviously working together and that kind of creative collaboration um, is more valuable and. It, in a sense, would transcend, you know, usually the problems that we would face when working on these publications together. Yeah, I think that, um, I mean, it's like, obviously I asked the questions in terms of like trying to, you know, suss out what is the difficulties, you know, of working in the catalogue, but I think that, you know, your answer actually fruitfully kind of marries like the difficulties with like what is enjoyable. But um, maybe I can get Kai to, you know, share a little bit more about, you know, in that process. I think you've already alluded to a lot of parts in which you, you find enjoyable about it, but maybe to spend some time to really pin down what is it. So what is enjoyable about working on a publication, um, whether or not that is in addition or as opposed to an, to, to an exhibition itself, what, you know, is the experience of working on a publication like that you find enjoyable? I think one thing again that really came to mind is really um, the ease of communication um, that, that that we have between I mean with, with each other um, because we already have established that that um, level of comfort with one another. You know that you can trust this person. You've worked with this person. This person knows um, inside out of your practice. Yeah. Um, I think that, that really helps a lot. Um, but at the same time also, there is a clear line because this is a professional uh, collaborative um, effort between the two of us, or even in, in, in some cases, because we also collaborate with, with, with many other people. It's, it's also very important that I have to keep reminding myself that, you know, that I have to um, understand that this is also a job for mm -hmm. her so certain things like budget i mean like we we really discuss quite a bit um depending on like how much i have i, I think but but also like they sort of like go back and forth sometimes it could be maybe we can print lesser uh, lesser copies maybe we can have like lesser pages so like i think these things it, it sounds really trivial but when you do not have that kind of like relationship or like trust 
with the artist and designer sometimes these things becomes um um trivialized and people don't talk about it mm. and in the end it becomes quite a very um unhealthy relationship or experience mm. and i'm glad that i i, I did not have that mm. because like we were able to communicate these things very very freely with yeah. one another i think that it's nice cuz you know for this episode we're talking about how publications are like companions to exhibitions so in that sense they also take care of like the exhibitions they extend it beyond the the exhibition duration and run but i think that with each publication pro- project you were saying a lot about the trust that you have in Vanessa to be able to at least work together you know with her so i think that there's really a trust in her to take care of your work but also i think what's important here is that that relationship is reciprocal so that you also feel like with this publication project you need to take care of your collaborators too yeah. so i think that that's also why budget keeps coming up because it's also important to acknowledge that you know with this project you know it's also a chance to be able to feed into or seed other people's practices alongside yours so i think once again you know it comes back to the point about this trying to build that kind of um collaborative relationship that isn't a one off interaction with each publication and that there is a chance to actually see this collaborations to a future beyond each exhibition so we've mentioned a fair bit about the kind of writing or text that goes into the exhibition catalog but i think that you know in our experiences of looking at exhibition catalogs what comes up a lot is actually the images so um i would like to take some time to discuss a bit more about you know the images and the role of images in a catalog and how do you you feel about um the way that this image should represent the work in the exhibition it is interesting that you brought up this um discussion about documentation because um i personally feel that documenting of my artworks is, is a very important um um process um, in my practice um i i feel um portfolio is a very important um component um for 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 artists um across all all disciplines when when um making catalogs i think it is also interesting because then it gives even more importance to this act of like documenting artworks um over the years what i i felt um i i've experienced in in um my process of like documenting works for catalogs um it's like my my approach to them started to shift quite a bit because i think initially um most of my works were were paintings um so that means a lot of, of the photography um the, the the main things that i would really maybe be really aware of would be things like lighting as i slowly move towards assemblages um on the walls and then eventually my 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 works start started to exist um on on the ground um they occupy like spaces that are not as direct as say compared to to the wall um i think my my kind of like approach to documenting the works also kind of like shifted i became more more aware about how how i photograph them how one sculpture um sometimes i will even take like multiple um angles and try to see like what what i can do with them um but usually for for like a catalog i think because again because it's a it's a standard catalog i will usually have like a like a standard front frontal view um, of the work with the concept of the show which is basically centered around clickbait images and again the erasure of the the female figure in the clickbait images the way that they start to appear on on your web page is this sort of irritating small things that appear at the side so i wanted to kind of bring that conceptually into the publication where they sort of start to jump in on the tags appear in front of the tags almost like those little irritating windows you want to close up so in a sense because there was so much of these images that i was working with for the show um i wanted to use that conceptually rather than prioritize it in a very kind of like here is my artwork and um and sort of give it that strange importance i think the the quantity of it begins to get the point across of what the works are and what it is about um but echoing also on what kai said about the importance of images when we approach a catalog um of course some of the technical things we need to look out for is that the images are well shot and they are well lit um and you know certain things like the angling of the work um how well it's been sort of processed or overly done i think those are things that you know for 
artists or whoever who, who shoot the show, there's a lot of that care so plays into it. So you don't want to kind of like take a, a photo of your phone and then just sort of pass that through. The, you know, I think it's just sort of the, the, the kind of baseline standard to get something printed out well, to yeah. kind of get a really good documentation of the work. Um, in the case of Click Candy, I, to me, the, the installation shots were not the key factor in the, in the publication because they can exist elsewhere on the web. But for me, it was really more about allowing the text to, you know, take more precedence, but allowing the quantity of these images to reflect the concept of the show, to have them sort of appear everywhere. Um, so in a sense, you could say that there are actually a lot more artwork images in the book. They're just not presented in a way that um, is, gives it a lot more space. So I think, it's, I think it's important, like images are important, but also maybe in certain dimensions how we challenge the use of the images are also equally quite fascinating. I think that um, it's not just about the relationship between you know, text and images that, that gets influenced by the exhibition, but it's also the very format of like this printed matter, this publication. So with that, I just want to also spend some time to talk a little bit about um, the work that you did for um, the group exhibition that Kai was also in um, called One for the Birds that was in uh, 1961 and it was in 2019. So I think that um, what's really interesting about it is that it, it took the form of a poster but I think it's also very much um, I would consider like a catalogue or a brochure that you take away because everyone can sort of take that po poster with them away from the exhibition venue. But what's interesting is that when you're in the space and you're recalling how the posters were sort of um, displayed in a stack in a the space they actually had the presence of an artwork so it's a very kind of interesting format to be thinking about, you know, the publication as this object that can exist not just um, as a companion. I think it's still a companion to the exhibition, but it exists sort of on the same kind of level as mm. all the other artworks that are on display. But um, because of, you know, of that novelty, I would um, like to spend some time to think, um, maybe ask you both about, you know, the process or the, co the how, they, how they came about. Yeah. So when, when, when I, I was doing that group show, um, as usual, like I, I had this discussion with uh, Sufian and Joel, who are the two other artists um, in, in in that show, that we we would like to have a kind of like publication. Um, but again, we were very I think at, at that period we, we were also very preoccupied with, with making of the work. So we were like, just get someone that we can work with, and then like, we we trust and like okay, Vanessa, <laughs> right? Like who, who else? So again, I I spoke to her, but it's also interesting because when I spoke to her again, I realized like each time I I, I speak to her about like like. A different project it's almost like let's start from 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 square one or even square zero right like l let's not try to repeat what we have done and try to like maybe make a, a publication that is like still respects and respond to to the theme of, of the exhibition so what started off as just i quote myself like a simple publication i think then she she sort of like like brought about the idea about like um because the, the the premise of the show is really centered around artists um, who 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 utilizes or incorporate objects um, in their practice. So this idea of object is a very prominent thing that that I, I kept on mentioning to her. So she was like, "Why not we give this publication um, a, a more um, expanded um, um, function?" We, we were also talking about scale. Like, why not we then blow it up? Then like, like how big? Then she was like, AO. <laughs> like, oh, AO <laughs> is like, like ideally, but also because of, again, budget constraints, something that we mentioned a lot. Um, I think in the end, we, we, we had to settle with A1. I think this is A1. Yeah. This is not AO, right? Um, but even we realized that we could work with that. We realized actually that the, the, the size really worked. But then again, it was her idea that, that she, 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 she actually um, voiced out, why not we even make it into an actual object like by, by, by stacking them? Because the moment like you stack all this like oversized, overblown um, posters and they occupy that kind of like space and visibility in the premise of the show, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. then people get really affected by this. People will wonder, is this an artwork? Is this a publication? Um, people were actually very intimidated by, 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 by that stack of catalog. People actually thought it's an artwork and sadly, a lot of people, I think only like a handful of people actually um, took back some copies of, of the poster. We we wanted the, the, the visitors to actually bring back a copy, but because it was placed 
amongst the work it look like it's an artwork i think nobody dare to like like take mm-hmm. anything i realized that um the line between design and art um i can afford i mean we can afford to to challenge these things um if we look into some of the images um of the exhibition um truly if no one mentioned people would actually think that that is a piece of artwork because it's actually quite high like like from the ground is like about like like till here one started as this idea to do a publication is almost something like to a company but this is not a company this is almost like part of the mm-hmm. the show when kai mentioned about the work that i think the i think the first thing that came to mind was that it's a show with like three artists and only three works and so if we make a very so sort of traditional catalog it mm. almost it's like i also want to chat like question like what's the what what is the point mm. when we when we mm. make a catalog what mm-hmm. is the point of it can we try to push the boundaries of it um and so i think in the case of um, the poster it it's like kai said it became like a like an object right and it's almost like let's treat this as an object mm. even for the poster you you actually realize that again sort of the text like their names their artworks take a lot more precedence than the actual work itself again so when you start to look at it you see so much more of who they are what their works are about um and that kind of encompasses the space again um you know and become and becomes an object la. so with i think with each project you know i try to think about what is the work about uh can we push the boundaries of what it is um is it possible what you know how can it kind of take a, a form that maybe we haven't tried or it or even not say trying but a sick of trying but can we can take the form that responds to the show even um you know when when we're faced with something like okay here's a show with very few people then let's try to do something different um let's 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 really you know push their names let's push their work forward mm. you know in a way that is not that won't be so kind of smallish and kind of mm-hmm. put together in a small place instead but let's really give it space to end off um i think i want to ask what are some tips and advice that you want to pass on to creatives who may be embarking on their first publication project what has been mentioned quite a lot uh, in our uh, conversation is this word um collaboration but perhaps also i would like to reword it um into something which is maybe perhaps less intimidating um working together um i think it is a, a very valuable um thing to to consider um when when people are like making publication um communication and also trust i think th- those things are very very important yeah yeah to kind of echo what kai said i think communication is a very key thing um because in communication you are then able to build trust in communicating the expectations and communicating clearly what um what we we would try to like work towards um but on top of that i also kind of want to say to just enjoy the process because it's not something that should stress you out but really it should be something that you enjoy and whatever problems happen it's just to adapt and overcome really like you just roll with the punches figure it figure your way out and then you know get to um get to the way you want to be of the project so that's all we have uh thank you so much for tuning in and taking your time with us yeah that's all <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching this episode of art books a beginner's guide if you have enjoyed this series we would also appreciate it if you can fill in a feedback form that can be accessed through the QR code or link we have also compiled a list of titles or texts that have been referenced or consulted on in the episode for your reading pleasure See you next time.